first step is you need to log in as an administrative user to be able to set up workflow. Once you're into Sugar, the next step is going to be to go into the admin section. Once you're in the admin section, you'll scroll down to the developer tools section and you can see workflow management is the link right here. All right, so here we are in a fresh clean system. We don't have any workflow definition set up. So before we get started, let's briefly talk about what a workflow can be used for. So workflows are actions that will happen automatically in the system when certain conditions are met. The example that we're going to set up is when a case status changes to pending input, we're going to send an email to the account associated with the case. Okay, so we'll start by setting up the workflow definition right here. You just mouse over the workflow definitions tab in the navigation. Go to the first option to create a workflow definition. We'll give it a simple name. As soon as the record is saved, the other option here is after time elapses. The main reason that you'd use an after time elapses workflow would either be when you want something to happen far into the future, like maybe a week or two weeks, or in the event that you're going to create a workflow that fires and depends on related module information, you'll also want to use after time elapses because some of those records that your workflow relies on may not have been created yet. So you just choose after time elapses and then uh, choose like a minute. In this case, we're going to go ahead and do when the record is saved because we're not depending on any required modules that will be created. The target module identifies where the record is going to be created. So our example is going to use the cases module, so we'll select that here. The processing order, you can usually just go with the default. In most cases, it doesn't really matter which one happens first. So we're going to keep it with alerts and then actions. And status is related to the workflow itself. So if this were set to inactive, then this workflow will not work. In our case, we're going to go ahead and keep it active. And finally, once again, a lot of times you'll go with the default here, new and updated records. The reason you might use new records only is if you only want a workflow to happen when a record is created. So if, for example, you want to fire a workflow rule off a lead being created, then you may choose new records only so that that workflow doesn't happen every time the lead is saved or if you only want a workflow to happen when records are updated and for some reason you don't want it to happen when the record is created, then you'd choose updated records only. In this case, we'll go ahead and go with the default and we'll skip the description. So now we have our workflow definition created. The next step is to create conditions that need to be met for this workflow to fire. So we'll hit the create button here. In our case, we want to have this workflow fire when a field in the target module changes to or from a specified value. So in this case when the status field in the cases module changes to pending input we're going to go ahead and fire this workflow rule. So we'll select our status field and hit save and then the next step here the second option here lets you set it up so that the workflow will only happen if the field was a specific value before it changed. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck this box. So no matter what the case status is before it changes, this workflow will fire. So we'll save that. And now we've set up our conditions so we know exactly when the workflow will fire. The next step is to create the alert that we want to send. So let's give it a, a quick name. We'll start out by just using a normal message. We also have the option to create a custom template. And we're just going to do a normal message. So whatever we type in this box is the text that will be sent in the body of the email. So we'll say, please provide input. And I'm going to put this little text in here. Okay, so once we've created the alert, we want to choose who is going to get it. In this example, we want to send it to the account associated with the case. So that is going to be a recipient associated with a related module, this third option down. So the first step is to choose the module that is related to the cases module. Now, 
this can be confusing, so we should chat about it for a second. Because we only want to get to the first related module, we we're going to go ahead and save this. If you wanted to get to a contact associated with the account, that's where you would take it a step further and choose the second related module. In this case, we're going to go ahead and leave it blank because we want to go straight to the account. So we'll hit next. We need to select the custom fields that we're going to use. So we'll choose email address. This will be the account name. And the address type, in this case, we'll stick with the two option. And now we have at least one recipient on the list for this workflow. Now we want to return to the workflow definition. And we can see that now we have everything set up. So the next step is to go ahead and test it. I've already created a case that we can use to test this. So let's go there and check that out. All right, so we have this case. The current status is assigned and it's associated with a test account in the system and I added my email address to this uh, account. So we'll edit this case and I'm going to change the status to pending input like our workflow says. We'll save it and wait patiently for the email to arrive. All right, so you can see that we got our email alert and this is the text that we had. So. Here's an example why you can see you might want to go ahead and use a template. You can make a cleaner layout. You could even use HTML. So if you wanted to send your customer a little bit more nicely formatted email, templates would probably be the way to go. So let's go ahead and hop back into the CRM. And we're going to extend this workflow to also execute an action when it fires. And when this workflow fires, we're going to change the priority on the case we'll head back to now from high down to low because once the status changes to pending input it, it's not high priority for me anymore now it's kind of in the customer's court so let's add an action to this workflow so what we want to do is update a field in the target module we'll hit next and we can select multiple fields but in this case, we're just going to go ahead and modify the field priority. See, each time you check this, it gives you the option to set that to something. So we're going to set priority to low as soon as this workflow fires. So we'll save that. And now we can see we have this new action down here. So when we go back to this case, we'll see that it's still on pending input. So we're going to change it back to assigned and now when we change this to pending input we'll both receive the alert and it'll update the priority for us so I'll change this to pending input save the record and already you can see that the workflow is fired because it's set priority to low and if we refresh my email see that I got a new one and there it is